Hello, today I've got an interesting topic, China's geography and how it compares to that of my home country, the United States. So, let's go. First of all, let's talk about geographic size, where China and the U.S. are actually quite similar. China is the third largest country in the world by area, while the United States is fourth. They both have about nine and a half million square kilometers of land. On a map, the continental U.S. looks somewhat smaller than China, and indeed it is, in part because China's north-south axis is much longer than the U.S.'s. To make a comparison, Mohe, China's northernmost city in Heilongjiang province, is at a similar latitude to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, while its southernmost city, Sanya, Hainan, is as far south as Port-au-Prince, Haiti. But if that map of China and the U.S. superimposed on each other made China look a fair chunk bigger to you, don't forget that Alaska is enormous and makes up a lot of the difference between the two countries' sizes. Where China really exceeds the U.S., of course, is in population. China's population of 1.4 billion people is over four times that of the U.S. This, of course, means that China has a much higher population density, and you can really feel that in major Chinese cities like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. It's a bit complicated to compare city populations between the U.S. and China, since Chinese cities have jurisdiction over rural areas around their urban cores, a little like if the city of Los Angeles had jurisdiction over all of Los Angeles County. But even using relatively conservative estimates for the population of Chinese cities, only New York City would really be in the company of those top Chinese cities. One thing the U.S. and China have in common concerning their populations is that there are some densely populated areas, while other areas are much emptier. Just as the U.S. population is much denser east of the Mississippi and on the West Coast than elsewhere, so much of China is centered on its seaboard, where one finds most of its major cities, and to some extent in the center of the country, with large cities like Wuhan, Xi'an, Chengdu, and Chongqing. The west of China is much more sparsely populated, kind of like the Rocky Mountain states in the U.S. There are also some parts of China with harsh weather and rough terrain that would not be great candidates to sustain a large population. For example, the deserts in the northwest and the high mountains of Tibet. The U.S. is made up of 50 states and one federal district. What about China? Mainland China consists of 22 provinces, four directly administered municipalities, and five autonomous regions. The provinces combined have a bit over half of China's land, but have a great majority of the country's population. The largest province by population, Guangdong, has 126 million people. That makes it over three times the population of the largest U.S. state, California though its area is smaller than Missouri's. The least populous province, by contrast, is actually the largest by area, Qinghai. But it's still about 10 times as populous as the least populous U.S. state, Wyoming. The five autonomous regions, which are called that because they are designated for ethnic minorities, take up considerable land. For example, the largest autonomous region, Xinjiang, is the eighth largest country subdivision in the world, though slightly smaller than the state of Alaska. The autonomous regions are much less densely populated than the provinces, though, which is why they hold a much lesser share of the country's population. Still, even the least populous autonomous region, Tibet, has three and a half million people, more than 20 U.S. states. The last type of division of mainland China are the four directly administered municipalities. There are a lot of municipalities in China, but most of them are part of a province or autonomous region. Four of them are not, and are instead administered directly by the central government. They are essentially cities at the provincial level. As you might guess, they are very densely populated but because their areas are quite small, they still don't have a very large share of China's population. 
Also, as I previously mentioned, Chinese cities tend to have jurisdiction over considerable areas outside their urban cores. This is true of the directly administered municipalities as well. This includes Lingang, where I live now, and which is under the jurisdiction of the directly administered municipality of Shanghai, though it's nearly 70 kilometers by road from the central city. One key difference between the U.S. and China in terms of its subdivisions is that the U.S. is a federation, but China is a unitary state. The difference, essentially, is that China is a single state divided up into provinces, autonomous regions, and municipalities, whereas U.S. states are not just divisions of the country, they're constituent parts of the country that come together to form a federation where the states retain significant rights. One way that this works out geographically is that U.S. states have an inalienable right to their own territory, and this is a key reason that the U.S. map hasn't changed since 1959 when Alaska and Hawaii were added. By contrast, China's national government has the power to change the country's internal borders and has done so several times. For example, in 1955, a province called Zhehe was completely abolished and merged into other provinces in northern China. In the 1950s and 60s, a section of coastline that had belonged to Guangdong was given to Guangxi, then back to Guangdong, and then to Guangxi again. In 1988, the island of Hainan was split off of Guangdong to become a separate province. And in 1997, Chongqing was split off of Sichuan province to become the newest directly administered municipality. It's still possible there could be more changes to China's map in the future if the central government wants them. I should point out that I'm deliberately restricting this video to mainland China only, as that's the area you can travel through without needing a separate visa. Maybe I'll cover the areas outside mainland China some other day in some other video. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to China's geography. If you did and you want to see more about me and China, this would be a great time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.